I was pumping gas, most definitely. And printing t-shirts and selling ink pens and, you know, I mean, every, every, any, anything and everything. I ended up acting by accident. I'd moved out to Los Angeles and uh, I remember I was filling out job applications with a friend of mine who happens to be, he, happened, he was an actor uh, less known then than he is now, Nicolas Cage. Um, and I was filling out job applications at any you know, video stores, clothing stores, anything, and just to be able to pay the rent, to pay the bills, to live. Well, I'll do anything at this point. I, I do feel a kind of uh, need to to follow whatever it is I'm after. I mean, I, I need to bash on into what, into the direction that I'm going. Uh, yeah, it's it's important to do what you want without much compromise. Sure. Do you like being an actor? I do, most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. I mean, there are, there are some occupational hazards that I, I could live without, but, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's a good job. The loss of privacy, kind of, even more than just the loss of privacy, the sort of aggressive invasion uh, mm -hmm. of privacy on your private life. Um, it's... It's very strange because you are treated in some circumstances as a novelty. And that's a very uncomfortable position to be in. I mean, mostly by this, particularly like the paparazzi. <clears throat> they have a tendency to, to be pretty aggressive. These, these bloodsuckers, I just couldn't believe it. That they would try to take something so sacred and, and so special. I mean, your first child born happens one time obviously uh, and these these people outside they, they are trying to turn it into some kind of a circus and that's so unfair I mean that's bizarre that's that's no way to live your life that is no way to live your life well the system the industry um, I was on a television series for three three or four years, about four seasons. And I was, without question, a product. Not my own product, that was somebody else's product. And they shoved me down the throats of America and it was a very uncomfortable situation. And I swore to myself that when I got off that show, I, uh, I would do what I wanted, the way I wanted to do it. Um, so. And I stick to that, so, I mean, I, if, if I had to do the leading man things just to, just to continue to be an actor, continue to work, nah, I'd rather, I'd rather go back to pumping gas. Really? Yeah. As I said, it's a great job, it's one of the best jobs I've ever had, but I'm, there are other things. I maintain a hunger, but not an ambition. You know, I, 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 I'm very happy to explore all possibilities of a character and, and really, you know, uh, uh, dive in um, to um, to the role. I mean, to the point of where you know Disney wanted to wanted to fire me. They wanted to fire you from Pirates. Yeah, because they couldn't understand what I was doing. They didn't understand the character. They they were actually were contemplating subtitling the film. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when you marooned me. Any actor could do that, um, but I, it's not me, it wasn't me. There were other things that I probably should have done, not from my perspective, I mean, from my point of view, I did the right things. Every, every film that I've done, I'm really happy that I, that I made that choice. I don't have any regrets whatsoever, but I mean, in terms of you know, bankability, I should have done a few of the things that I didn't do, but I'm glad I didn't do them. I mean, yeah. Because it wouldn't have been you. Yeah, it would, I would have, it would have been for the wrong reason. I did, I, I, everything that I've been lucky enough to do, I did for the right reasons. So you consider yourself lucky? Very lucky, yeah. But you have to have talent to meet the luck, right? Somebody hands you the ball and you run, you know? 
I mean, and if you get hit, you get hit, or, or maybe you make it through. I, you never know. But I mean, I I just know that somebody handed me the ball at a certain point, and I was hungry enough to keep running, um, and I'm still running. What I do is, I'll tell you the strange thing is, what happens at a certain point, it's kind of like that thing Marlon said about being observed and having been the observer. Uh, you get to a place at a certain point where you're more comfortable in front of a camera, do, doing, behaving, living in front of a camera than you are in normal life. That is to say, like out at a restaurant or something like that. You know, it's a strange job for a grown man. And that's it. Do that good. It's a strange job for a grown man. The greatest thing you can do as an actor, I think, is to be a, an observer. And at a certain point, something bizarre happens, and you're not able to observe in public anymore because everyone is observing you. So that's a, that's a little bit, that's a kind of a danger. Search for simplicity. <laughs> Stay away from anything that makes a bunch of people stare at you while you're in a restaurant. There was a guy who I worked with many years ago, and we were talking about success and money and all that stuff. And um, he, he told me this one thing. He said, you know, money doesn't change anybody. Money reveals them, you know. Same thing with success. And uh, I, I, I believe that, you know, whole, wholeheartedly. I, I, I think I've been revealed. I don't think I, I haven't changed. I, I'm still exactly the guy that used to pump gas, you know. I'm still the guy that was a mechanic for a minute, you know. I'm still, exactly. I just happen to have a weird, weirder job at the moment, you know. If I could not see the movies, I think I'd be better off. I just, I, I get very uncomfortable uh, watching myself. It just, it just feels strange. I tried to see one once because the director asked me to. I fell asleep 35 times. <laughs> I feel the experience. I'm happy with the process is what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. The process of creating, the process of exploring, the process of breaking formula, the, the process of dropping the bottom out of a scene. Spent time in, in uh, uh, Great Ormond Street, where, where it was, uh, I, w I was the parent uh, when my daughter was ill. And it was, uh, I mean, it was, I've known darkness in my life, but uh, that was the darkest period ever, you know. And I'd always kind of done these visits, but after that, the visits became more and more important uh, because the kids, Bless them, you know, they're so strong, they're so courageous. But the parents are the ones who are slowly dying. And to be able to bring a smile or a giggle um, to these people is, uh, it, it means everything in the world to me. You, know? you have to realize that whatever your day is, whatever you're doing, whatever your job is, whatever people think of you or project you to be. None of it matters, uh, really, until you look round and see um, people who, who are in need. And um, I think the, probably the best benefit of my job is to, uh, to help to make people smile who otherwise uh, wouldn't or couldn't have a smile on their face. So, um, yeah. That's my deal. It's not like most people we know. There is something offbeat about him that is intriguing and ultimately attractive. There's something magical about him. I, I, you're, my kids call him Uncle Fun. You know? And uh, he is, when you are with him, you are pretty certain that nobody else is having as good a time as you are. Everybody's damaged. Well, everyone's damaged on some level. And I, 
I'm fascinated with human behavior. I'm, I'm fascinated with the flaws of the human being. I mean, I'm just fascinated with it. I mean, ticks and, yeah. We're all made of stardust. If you could think about that every day, if that was a part of your daily, if something, if that came to you every day, that thought, what a wonderful thought. If we could celebrate every breath that we take, because nothing's a guarantee. If we could celebrate the breath and the exhale, which is being alive without, you know, oh, my car won't start. There are things that are very, very important in life that we, we just, we don't think about, you know? And, the, and one of the most worrisome things that I, that I went through for years is you're freaked, up, freaked out about your past. You're worried, you're scared to death of the future. And that's all you're thinking about. But the now doesn't exist, you know? And I think that's a grave mistake that we make. Yeah, and then the fact that you have a 20, 20 year career of failures and then you do a pirate movie and that buys you an island is pretty, I mean, the irony of that is pretty, 